In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Greetings at the start of a new church year, the first Sunday of Advent. And just over four weeks till Christmas. And always at on the first Sunday of Advent, we bless the Advent wreath and then we light the first candle. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the saviour of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite Susan to light the first candle on the wreath. It's always slightly confusing as we begin Advent that the readings aren't at all Christmassy. The first and second Sunday of Advent, the focus is more on the final coming of Jesus at the end of time. A um, slight exception to that is the first reading where Jeremiah, at a dark time, makes a promise to his people about to go into exile that he will, God will make a virtuous branch grow for David um, and out of that the son of David will be born as our Messiah is the implication. But the other readings, both the Gospel with Jesus in the last week of his life talking about desperate things that are going to happen and the need to stay awake and to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. And then Paul, in the earliest letter in the New Testament, writing to the early Christians in Thessalonica, again, um, to live the life that God wants, as you learnt from us, and as you're already living it. At a time when, again, he expected and the Thessalonians expected the end of the world. So, we begin Mass, and we begin this church year and this season, bringing everything we've lived, perhaps, in the last year, offering it to the Lord, and praying that we might make a fresh start in preparation for the Lord's coming at Christmas. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the prophet Jeremiah. See, the days are coming, 
It is the Lord who speaks. When I am going to fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a virtuous branch grow for David, who shall practice honesty and integrity in the land. In those days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell in confidence. And this is the name the city will be called, the Lord our integrity. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Saviour. To, to you, O Lord, Lord, I lift, lift up my soul. soul. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. To, to you, O Lord, Lord, I lift, I lift up, up my soul. soul. His ways are faithfulness and love for those who keep his covenant and will. The Lord's friendship is for those who revere him. To them he reveals his covenant. To you, Lord, Lord, I lift up my soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. May the Lord be generous in increasing your love and make you love one another and the whole human race as much as we love you. And may he so confirm your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless in the sight of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus Christ comes with all his saints. Finally, brothers, we urge you and appeal to you in the Lord Jesus to make more and more progress in the kind of life that you are meant to live, the life that God wants, as you learnt from us, and as you are already living it. You have not forgotten the instructions we gave you on the authority of the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And, and give us your, your saving, saving help. help. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, on earth, nations in agony, bewildered by the clamour of the ocean and its waves, people dying of fear as they await what menaces the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then they'll see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand erect. Hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Watch yourselves, or your hearts will be coarsened with debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of life, and that day will be sprung on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come down on every living person on the face of the earth. Stay awake, praying at all times for the strength to survive all that is going to happen and to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. 
A story to begin with. It's called Mary's Dream. Mary had a dream. And when she awoke, she told Joseph about the dream. Joseph, I've just had the strangest dream. I dreamt that a family were preparing a birthday party for our son. At least I think they were. They brought lovely presents for each other put up beautiful decorations around their house. And Joseph, they had a tree. Yes, a tree. Right in the middle of the house, with more presents around it. Oh, it was lovely. But, Joseph, I noticed they were giving presents to each other, and not to Jesus. I'm not sure they even know who he, who he was. How sad for someone not to be known at their own birthday party. But Joseph, I'm glad it was only a dream. The world we live in begins to celebrate Christmas now. And it doesn't believe in Advent, a time of waiting and preparation. And today, that season begins. And its prime function is to ensure that part of the focus, at the very least, in our individual and family celebrations of Christmas is on Jesus Christ, son of Mary and Joseph. And we say every year that Advent is a season under threat because many people will start to celebrate Christmas. Um, there are kind of two phases, it seems. From now to the 25th of December, we tend to celebrate with people that we see um, during the year, colleagues, friends, workmates, whatever. And then the 25th onwards, family days for those with families and often a time of loneliness for others. It's good to remind ourselves of the origin of Advent. It comes from the Latin word Adventum, simply meaning coming. And perhaps slightly confusingly, it's about preparing to celebrate three coming of Jesus. Again, as I've said before, his coming in history, in mystery, and in majesty. In history, we look back on what took place, we believe, in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. In mystery, in other words, his coming in the crib, in the stable, in our world, each Christmas, and particularly um, as we gather to celebrate in our church communities. And in majesty, it's coming at the end of time, the final coming. I think the first two are fairly familiar, but the focus on the first and second Sundays of Advent is always, in the readings at least, on the mystery that is the majesty um, with matching readings. Although, as I said, the first one is more a point pointing to um, our celebration in mystery. And the readings that we listen to come from passages in the Gospels and the letters of Paul that reflect how fragile the world of the early Christian communities was and their fears and uncertainties, feeling adrift in small boats or um, echoes of the channel 
uh, that is in small communities surrounded by the Roman Empire with intermittent persecution and an expectation um, that Jesus would be coming again soon or by the time Luke writes his gospel not so soon this focus on the end times it's probably uncomfortable for us though with the threat of climate change and Covid and the new Omicron, if it's pronounced like that, variant, I think has reminded us of our fragility and meant that we're probably not as complacent as we were. And so there's a stress on vigilance and alertness. I think that's appropriate um, on this first Sunday. It's as if Jesus is saying to us, make this season of preparation happen. Try to awaken your own faith and the faith of your communities. Keep asking for strength and help in learning how to follow in my footsteps. And be more diligent in practicing my presence among you. And I'll come back to that. And in the parish, um, we always try to offer helps to help people prepare. don't know if we can claim that the Christmas fair um, next weekend is part of our preparation. Well, I think it really is because it's an invitation for the community to come together um, and to prepare with gifts and the like um, and to give of ourselves. Um, I think if we come together at the Christmas fair probably we're more able to come together um, at our celebrations too. And in a fortnight's time, there's the Advent retreat in the five parishes of our cluster, a Saturday morning, 10 to 1, um, where we're going to be signing up with, or you're invited to sign up, um, to be with Father Martin Moran, the Oblate Parish Priest in Leith, who will be leading He's an experienced retreat giver. So to take that time apart, to prepare, to reflect. And that evening and the following day, we have another of our Reconciliation Sundays. I suppose the Sacrament of Reconciliation um, helps us become more aware of both that we need a saviour to save us from ourselves and our difficulty in changing and our capacity to make a mess of things and the fact that we have a saviour in Jesus Christ there to help us and encourage us and I think the kind of the bracing facing of ourselves um, and, but also trusting in God's love of us as we are. Um, I think it's always good to try to remember that reconciliation is not supposed to be an ordeal or a time of worry and anxiety. Um, a friend once called it the sacrament of God's recklessness, God's willingness to reach out and forgive us and help us and guide us whatever we've done. And one final thing that we're putting on, a new thing this year, um, a ecumenical walk two days before Christmas, starting at St John's and going around all the local churches in Portobello at least, with our fellow Christians, just as we haven't come together um, in our communities um, till recently with Covid. So we've not had the chance to come together with our fellow Christians. And what better time than in preparing to celebrate the birth of the Saviour that we all believe in. And always on this Sunday I make practical suggestions. One that seems to um, touch something in people is the suggestion to pray our Christmas cards. 
um, rather than ticking them off, and also when we're opening them from others, perhaps to light a candle and to pray for the person who we're writing the card to, to hold them in our heart. And when we open cards, um, to pray in thanksgiving for that person, or gratitude for that person, or simply for that person's needs. There's the same, it's more of a challenge in Christmas shopping, when we're buying our gifts as well. Um, and another practical suggestion, um, if you've got the capacity on Christmas Day to include people, rather than you know, needing to be included, um, just think of who you might reach out to over the season. But I think Advent is as much, if not more, about waiting than doing. Not the kind of nervous waiting before a doctor's appointment or the dentist, but the kind of yearning, expecting, expectant waiting when you are longing for something to come and it's not coming quickly enough. I remember memories of, as a child, of when it seems, each day seemed so long as we were waiting to celebrate birthdays or Christmas. And to just about conclude with another suggestion, I remember 20 years ago, a retreat at Canoole, um, led by Linda Wright at Church of Scotland Deaconess, who gave our last cluster retreat two years ago. And she asked us to think of our favourite scripture passages. That's itself a worth, something worth doing, and perhaps writing out. And after we'd all given ours, she said, well, well, mine is, the light has shone in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There's so much darkness in our world. We just need to think of migrants and refugees like those who drowned in the channel this week, or people waking up frightened in Afghanistan and so many other places in the world. So there's no doubt about the darkness. But there's also so much good around. And that's not publicised. I think Advent can be a time when it's good to light a candle in a darkened room and perhaps sit and reflect on this. A time to take a step back and consciously look for the light that is present in our lives. The light that shines out of certain people. The light that is the result of an encounter with a child or with somebody with learning difficulties. There are so many possible opportunities. And ultimately, as we sit with our candle in the darkness, trying to give a bit of time in waiting, and I know I find that really hard, to celebrate the light of the world, Jesus Christ, at his birth. I was visiting an old friend who was dying with a brain tumour this week um, in Fife. It was a harrowing visit, but it was also a visit which warmed my heart because of the way that she was so surrounded by love, the care of her sisters and I know of her daughters and two. And just to see love in action like that, Those, I think, are good things to think about at this time. And in COVID, one of the things that we um, have done, and we do at this Mass, for those unable to receive Jesus in communion, we have had various acts of spiritual communion written by different parishioners. And we'll be reading it out after communion today. But in preparing this, I thought, actually, the act of spiritual communion is a perfect prayer for Advent. 
I'll try and put it in the newsletter next week. Lord Jesus, you've promised to remain with us in the Eucharist and in the depths of our own hearts. And to be with us in a special way at Advent and Christmas. Help us now to be still. To listen. And to surrender ourselves to your loving presence. Heal what may be fractured. Sustain and strengthen us for the tasks of this season. Enable us to welcome the mystery of your presence in all those we meet and in your birth into the world and in moments of quiet. May we rest in your love. Confess our faith in the longer version of the creed. In Jesus Christ, incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and become a human being. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of God's coming, near to us in Jesus, we offer our prayers in expectation 
of your unfailing love. In this season of expectation, we pray especially for all those who have little to look forward to. We pray for light in the darkness, making them less fearful and anxious. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. In today's Gospel, Jesus urges us to stay awake, to be prepared so that we can stand in confidence before him at the final judgment. We pray that we may not be distracted by the material values of the world, but rather keep our focus on the real meaning of our finite lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. On this first Sunday of Advent, let us remember that our preparation for Christmas should be a spiritual one, with our real joy being in celebrating the coming of Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. We pray that during Advent we may be granted the time and energy and the foresight and wisdom to review how we live our lives with our families, our friends, our community, our work, and most importantly, with our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. As we witness the tragic drowning of so many refugees in the English Channel this week, we pray for all those driven by war, hunger and despair to risk their lives on dangerous sea crossings. We pray that we and our European neighbours recognise them as God's children and open up to them the opportunities of a better life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for all who are sick, especially we remember those fighting illness and disease. Pray for David Dowie. For Una Johnston and Michael Ramston, for John War and the Western General, for John Freeman, for Kim O'Neill, for Father Raymond, for Jean Bonner and all those in our care homes, for Mike and Patricia Lawler, for Mike Noon. We pray for Jacqueline Marinello now out of intensive care at the Western. For Sandra Watt and Anne Tolson and Sam Burns. Pray for Mary Cole, and for Ray Donnelly, and for Aunt Ridge and Claire Johnstein, and Caroline Minto, for young Neve McDougall, for Father Christy Fox, for Tommy Muir and James Shepherd, for Andrew Franklin, for Edward Caulfield. Pray for all whose health we're concerned about all those awaiting or undergoing treatment and tests. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who've died. Especially we remember those who've died this week. Ian Henderson and Murdo Tate and Francis Casement. Pray for those whose anniversaries occur around now. Willie Roberton, for Robert Watson, for Basil Yuska, for Charlie McLaughlin, for Elizabeth Elton and Patrick McClory. Pray for all whom we grieve. Especially we remember Catherine Walker, whose funeral is on Friday. We pray for Ian O'Brien, for Vincent and Rosemary McDevitt. We pray for George Larum, for Mary Fair and Isa McCafferty. Remember Ina McCann and Mary Glancy. We commend them all to the tenderness of our God. We pray for Rupert Rich. 
Stephen Von Schenk. Lord, in your mercy, in silence, we offer the prayers of our own heart. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we ask Mary, in this season in which she plays such a part, to be close to us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, in your unfailing mercy, grant us your saving help during this Advent season, as we try more earnestly to grow together in holiness and faith. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed is all of heaven. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of your eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. But when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. So with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end to be acclaimed.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Leo, our Bishop, the clergy and all who minister in your name. Remember also Jamie Clark and Alison Thompson and Jim Walsh, whose anniversary is on Monday, and Brian Carr and Rupert Ridge and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Peter George and Helen Hanley, and Margaret and George Hancock, and Monica Dawson and Sue McDevitt, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them and Father Andrew into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, St. Mary Magdalene, St. John the Evangelist, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Save his invitation, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on our faith, the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share the peace of Christ in whatever way we can. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. An act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you have promised to remain with us in the Eucharist and in the depths of our own hearts. Help us now to be still, to listen, and to surrender ourselves to your loving presence. Heal what may be fractured, sustain and strengthen us for the tasks of this day. Enable us to welcome the mystery of your presence in all those we meet. And in moments of quiet, may we rest in your love. Amen.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ. Amen. 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 The notice is, Mass this week is normal, except Tuesday Mass is at 10 a.m. because it's St Andrew's Day and there'll be a Mass with P6 from St John's Primary School at St John's. Just to let you to next Sunday there are children's Masses and we're trying to encourage the children to, and their families to go in the front half of the church and if anybody's a bit nervous about coming because of the increase in number at Mass um, well there'll be there's the Vigil Mass and there's lots of space in the back and run down the aisle. aisles. The Christmas Fair, or the Advent of Christmas Fair perhaps, um, next Saturday in the church, 10am to 1pm. And the proceeds are going to uh, a new camera fund for St Mary Magdalene's because we have to hit the camera backwards and forwards each time um, when we're live streaming. And also for the St John's Tower Fund. Um, I'm glad to say the tower and the scaffolding has survived last night's gales. Um, but we still have to raise the money for the tower. Though there'll also be a ski ass stall and a chance to buy Christmas gifts for those um, in, in which benefit those in great need. Tuesday, the RCIA starts again the right of Christian initiation of adults for those interested in learning more about the Catholic Church and possibly even becoming um, or being received into the church. Tuesday evening, 7.30. Um, probably 7.45 um, from after this week. But if you're interested or if you're um, seeking confirmation or another of the sacraments of initiation, First Communion, um, do please make contact um, quickly because we're starting on Tuesday. I failed to mention in the homily one other major initiative for Advent. Prayer at night, 9.15pm each day uh, during Advent and beyond, starting tomorrow night at Sunday night. Um, just 10 minutes and just a chance to reflect quietly and pray together at the end of the day. And Monday week, our next healing mass. Do sign up for the Advent retreat if you can, or make contact and have your name put down. Um, also, the great Stecker charity for uh, the children's home in Malawi. Um, Sunday afternoon, 2 to 5 pm at 28 Dalkeith Street. Um, Emma Wood, who's hosted Gift, and Sandra, and Abigail, and her husband Dave, they're moving house, so they're selling lots of pictures and other things with all the proceeds going to Staker. Um, so do consider um, supporting them. I hope you have a very good first week of Advent. I would believe it's a really beautiful season and it's a, it's a time um, I think for me symbolised by the Advent wreath time of growing hope and expectation. So have a joyful Advent, which is always a possibility. I have a beautiful 
um, him there's longing in our heart it talks about light in the darkness the Lord be with you and with your spirit. may almighty God bless us all the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. go in peace to glorify the Lord with your life thanks, thanks. thanks.